happy holidays, everyone. Thank you for joining me for my review of The Whale, directed by Darren Aronofsky and starring Brendan Fraser. We are in, in the Brendan Fraser renaissance. But is he the only reason to go see this movie? Is he the only thing good about it? Before I get into that, let me talk about the premise. An obese, reclusive English teacher named Charlie, played by Brendan Fraser, tries to reconnect with his estranged teenage daughter Ellie, played by Sadie Sink from Stranger Things, for one last chance at redemption. The whale is rated R for strong sexual content, graphic dialogue, and language. Language! Start off with the good. Brendan Fraser gives the best performance of his career in this film as he plays Charlie, this morbidly obese English teacher who has gone through multiple tragedies and has started eating his feelings and getting so big that he doesn't even want to be seen by his students, the person that delivers his food, or anyone that cares about his, him in his life. He's just in this deep depression, but seems like such a positive person trying to uplift everyone around him. And Brendan Fraser plays this very, 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 very flawed character very well with a lot of charisma, a lot of heart, and a lot of subtlety that just tells a story in itself. A lot of things that he does in his eyes, his expressions, you can really feel the pain and the suffering that this guy is going through as he goes through this movie, interact with different people, or just him trying to get around in his house because of how large he is and how difficult it can be. It's really hard to watch a lot of times, but kind of inspiring sometimes when he can make it through. And he's not alone in this movie with giving a great performance. His supporting cast here, casted by Darren Aronofsky, is fantastic. Uh, his best friend and his home nurse, Liz, is really really great she's played by hong chao who's also in the menu this year and which she was great in as well and she does a fantastic job being this empathetic sympathetic character that really really cares about him trying to help him get better and try to get him the help he needs while also playing this kind of complicated character because she kind of indulges him in the things that has made his health so bad so it's it's a great performance where she's trying to save his life but at the same time she gives in because he she just knows he's not going to change and last but not least because there's a, a some other performances in here that's great but sadie sink we all know her from stranger things that she plays max which is fantastic in that show and she's great here as this his daughter ellie who he has been estranged from it for eight years hasn't seen her in eight years and now because of things that's going on in his life wants to reconnect with her and she plays this character that i despise and it's not because of bad acting or bad writing it's just that is how the character comes off as the character starts opening up and you see, interact with the father and other characters more and more you see that she's just a very troubled girl that's gone through a lot and was failed by two different parents in different ways and she's just taking out all that anger and and misdirected it towards everybody she's angsty to a point where you just don't like her and every time you i thought she was going to get like a little bit of sympathy from me or a little bit of uh like a positive feeling she just did something or i was like oh my god she gets she she gets on my nerves but i think that was the point because even though she's doing these vile things certain things that she she did to her father in this film that i thought was really really messed up i understood where it came from because she just felt like she was dropped by her her, her her father who she thinks is supposed to be there and love her and care for her so that dynamic is very complicated interesting sadie sink and brendan frazier's chemistry is fantastic and she really played a pivotal role in this movie throughout and made it really interesting in a lot of parts i've only seen one of darren aronofsky's films before this and that was black swan which i thought was an amazing film and he did a great directing job there and he does another great directing job here as well the camera a lot of times feel like a character in itself the way a lot of the shots are staged and things that he does where he's hinting for you to pay attention to something that's going on in the background or like characters are having a conversation but then something with the camera happens and you're and you're paying attention to multiple things at the same time he creates this thing that could have been really boring whereas most of the time because it's 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 in one place it's just in charlie's apartment for the most of the time and it's a lot of conversations a lot of watching him just living his daily life but the way everything's so detailed in the apartment and the way he showcases Charlie's size and his movements and the things he has to do to live. And then on top of that, 
um, all the things in the background that kind of tell the story itself and the way he moves the camera to focus on certain things, especially there's this like kind of, I want to call it a gag, but it's an ongoing thing where characters will be doing something, moving around the house, and then you'll see a window and you'll see like a black figure pass it by and like, okay, who's coming now? Because there's so many different characters who don't like each other that's surrounding charlie brandon fraser's character that you're like when are they going to interact and i think that made things really really engaging at, at all times and, and the, the energy of the film in a film like this where it's one place just a lot of talking a lot of the time really really interesting i i, I this was a drama that I didn't really feel bored at any times. I was always interested in the way the story was progressing and how they were showing things. This is a very emotional film that hits on topics of depression, communication, religion, and relationships that you have and how you can miscommunicate things and you think that this person wants something, but you didn't really have that conversation. A lot of that was going on in this movie. And it's a very emotional point where I teared up a bunch of times feeling really bad for this character, uh, Charlie. and those last 10 maybe 15 minutes of the movie i was just an absolute wreck just crying <laughs> beyond belief and i haven't cried like that in a movie in a long time especially in a movie theater i saw this in the theaters i haven't cried like that in a long time in a movie theater and I, and it wasn't cheap it was built up it was earned and that's the best type of of cry in a movie is when they earn it and they they, they did the things to get you there and i think that what the biggest testament to this movie is that after the movie was done, I still remembered a lot of it. I, I um, it was unforgettable. A lot of the scenes that happened and I kept uh, playing a lot of it in my head. It kept me emotional on my ride home. Now let's talk about the bad. So Samantha Morton, who plays Charlie's ex-wife and Ellie's mom was, it's not a bad actress. She's, she's a talented actress, but she just felt miscast or out of place in this cast there she don't she does she's not in the movie a lot and the she's only in like one specific set piece of a scene but it just she just felt like she wasn't given the same direction as the other actors here there was like a lot of subtlety in this movie in terms of the way they act a lot of it was un, a lot of the story threads was unsaid it was left in the performance of the the actors but here she kind of just came straight forward and was really direct and just her chemistry with everybody else just felt kind of off to me specifically i don't know let me know in the comments below if you guys felt like that as well but i felt like the energy of the film was going really well i didn't i was never no point where i was bored or not interested but her extended scene where she confronts charlie for the first time in a long time it just didn't feel particularly right even though she was given a decent performance it just something was off and i'm not exactly sure what it was it's just when she came into the picture it just didn't feel like she was in the same movie let's get into my verdict so i break down my verdict into how i feel overall who who's this movie for and should you go see this movie in the theater or wait for it go streaming so let's start off with how i felt overall so i often joke leading up to this movie that this felt like the avengers affinity war of indie films because this movie has been hyped up since maybe march or april of this year i just kept hearing about how fantastic brendan fraser's performance was it got this ovation and i kept hearing about this movie over and over leading up to the finally the release in december and it's just really funny that i said that because the last time i cried in the theaters was because of the ending of avengers affinity war you can judge me if you want but everybody in my theater was wrecked at the end of that movie um and this is the, this is the next time i i was totally wrecked with this movie i thought that everything that it did to build up to the f the final couple minutes was really earned and i thought that this was a fantastic film through and through on the technical side the cinematography is not like fantastic and the music is not super memorable the directing by darren arofsky and the the script the screenplay the strong screenplay by uh, samuel d hunter does a really really good job of keeping this movie engaging for me all the time and i thought that it was one of the best of the year and who is this for i think that if you're someone that loves film if you love like indie films or like really like strong films that's telling a, like a character piece a character drama a character study as they say uh something that's in one location and utilizes that location really well and has a lot of environmental storytelling and a family drama because at the end of the day this is about 
Brendan Fraser's Charlie and his struggle, but ultimately becomes a family drama with a little mix of uh, butting heads with religion as well. There's a character in here that interacts with him and trying to bring him to Christianity of sorts, and that storyline is interesting as well. But if you're interested in those things and seeing someone uh, broke down to the different minutes, this is definitely for you. Now, should you go see this in the theater? If you're a, a, a lover of film, you should definitely see this. If you're like a, someone that loves all different types of movies, I think this is a great watch in the film. I mean, in the theater. Um, it wasn't that many people in the theater with me, but we were all bawling. We were all gasping. We were all mad at the same parts. And I thought that was a really great theater experience. Now, if you're someone that's more of a casual fan of film, or don't go to the theater that much. I don't want. I don't want to say to run to the theater to go see this, but definitely check it out when it goes on PVOD or streaming. I think this is something that everyone should check out at least once. With that said, I'm gonna give this movie an A. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What would you rate the whale if you saw it? And if you didn't see it, let me know in the comments below if my review edged you on, or are you gonna give it a pass? Drop all those comments down below. Let me know. Like the video if you like my review. Subscribe to my channel if you re it really helps with the algorithm. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified of my reviews, reactions, and ranking lists. I have tons of ranking lists. The 2022 is coming to an end. I'm going to ranking my top uh, 10 to 15 movies of the year, my best comic book movies, the just a different bunch of different lists to lead up my most anticipated movies for 2023 so hit that notification bell so you can be notified when those videos come out and you can watch more of my content right now